Welcome to our daily devotion. It's Friday, May 15th, and this is day 59 of our temporary pause of on-campus activities in response to the coronavirus pandemic. This week, I have been sharing with you the seven steps of prayer. The first one we talked about on Tuesday was to pray to God using one of the names that he's revealed himself by in the Bible. On Wednesday, we learned what praising God is. We praise God for who he is and what he has done for all people. Yesterday, we learned how to thank God. That's where we thank God for specific things that he's given us, provided for us, or answered a prayer for someone else. Today, we go to the fourth step, and that's to confess our sins and acknowledge Christ's forgiveness also. So let's dig into that. I'm sure you could define what a sin is, but I'm going to go ahead and read what Martin Luther wrote in the small catechism. Sin is every thought, desire, word, and deed that is contrary to God's law. Sin is not only about breaking God's law, but it's also the times in which we forget to keep it. And the reason why we sin is we're all born with a sinful nature, so it's impossible for us to ever be perfect. And that's why God sent Christ into the world. But confessing our sins is something that God wants us to do. I'm going to read for you a familiar passage that oftentimes begins our traditional worship services. 1 John 1, 8 through 10. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. So confessing our sins is important to God. But why are we forgiven? It's not the confession itself that we make. It's not the number of sins that we try to remember. It's not even the sincerity by which we pray it. None of that is worthy of getting God's forgiveness. The only way we receive it is solely because of what Christ has done for us, that he died on the cross for the world's sins. So we're worthy of nothing. It's all about Jesus and what he has done for us. So to confess our sins means to accept full responsibility for them. Now, what does it mean to acknowledge the forgiveness we have through Jesus Christ? Well, let's go to Romans 5, 8, and we will discover what that means. But God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we're simply acknowledging the fact that we're forgiven, not because of what we've done, but what God has done for us through Christ. So let's put steps number one through four into practice. And I invite you to bow your heads for prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray praise you for taking on human flesh and living a sinful life so that you would be the Lamb of God, which indeed takes away the sin of the world. We praise you for the unfathomable work of suffering for our sins for six hours on a Friday that we call good. We praise you for finishing that work in our behalf and rising triumphantly to display your power over sin, death, and the devil on Easter morning. Thank you that whenever we take responsibility for our sins and simply confess them to you, that you always forgive us. Thank you for the gifts of the Bible, baptism, and Holy Communion that assure us that we are forgiven through your death on the cross. Together we do confess that we have sinned against you in thoughts, words, deeds, desires, and actions. By what we have done to break your law, and what we have failed to remember to keep your law. For the sake of you and what you've done for us on the cross, we thank you that we are forgiven. May we never lose faith in you and what you've done for us so that we may be forgiven. In your name we pray. 
Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.